This is the Bar Stewards' Enquiry. You are talking absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. In, in what way? You were an underachiever in life. You were, I'd saved your bacon one time. You were gone. Well, I couldn't save you. I, I, I don't know but you said the right thing. But that's why you don't know anything about racing, John. I, I didn't say I do. Right? I'm saying that what, what have you contributed to racing? You are one of these take-out merchants. Take out all you can. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Bar Stewards Inquiry uh, weekend podcast. My name's Lee Keys of systembet.co.uk and with me as always, my partner in crime, John Ling of John Joe's Blogspot on Facebook. Now, this week's show, we've got um, Sandown Imperial Cup and we've got Wolverhampton. Uh, three races there on the all weather with the uh, Lincoln Trial. Um and I, before I get on to uh, the uh, the tips this week, and, and, a, and a good question to start the show, I'd just like to announce that we've got a Cheltenham Festival special uh, coming up on Sunday, which is uh, the, the, the normal Sunday sermon slot, but it's an extended edition covering all uh, myself and John's fancies for uh, the Cheltenham Festival uh, this year. And I can promise you there's been some proper work put into this so. We're hoping for some big results this year. I know John in particular is very confident uh, with what he's got to offer. Is Burn in the mid May, John. Absolutely. So, so that's something not to miss for you on Sunday. Um, on to today's show, we shall start with a question that leads up into uh, uh, the festival, really. Um, and it's it's been posed to me by, by a couple of people, as well as John, really. And he, he sort of said, Right, how how do ourselves, that's myself and John, approach the the Cheltenham Festival in terms of preparation and and you know how how, how do we go about it all? John, you might want to start off this question. Yeah, well, um, as a rule, I, I would say I, pr- I probably haven't prepared as well as I have for this one. As well, for years, really. Um, I've had a very right good cut at this this particular meeting um, I've, I've looked at all the entries I've, I tend to look across at my tracker which I, I use very extensively I mean I have say, about 250 horses in my tracker at any given time um, an awful lot of them crop up on the entries that would be my first starting point really I'd say how well treated I thought any of those were. Then I would start generally on the handicaps because I think most of the level weight races, you know, you're not talking unexposed horses, really, the festival maintenance. So I think the level weight races is sort of pretty much self explanatory. You know, there's a lot of analysis already taking place that you're not going to top. So yeah. I think. The, the edges lie in the handicaps if you can dig one out um, and I always sort of fancy my chances of digging one out uh, some, sometimes and maybe they even dig two out if it's a fair day festival um, yeah yeah but um, my, that would be my, my initial approach to it you know I would uh, say how horses are I'm keeping an eye out for see if they're ended up and look at their chances initially. Um, that can lead to throwing up other horses that you notice through watching videos, etc. Um, after that, um, I'd maybe think about staking plans. Um, obviously, I try and grade my bets as best I can, you know, and think, well, I'm going to get a good price this one. I want to be having as much on as I can stomach. Uh, yeah. That type of thing. Uh, and then I, I, I tend to write a report for my own use. Um, I mean, I've done about 4,000 words on Cheltenham this, this year, uh, analysing each race. I've, I've got my notes there like... So it was like a mini spotlight for each race, um, yeah. where 
I've I've thinned it down to only the horses that I'm interested in backing. So like anything else that wins that's not on our spotlight list, I, I won't be backing. You know, so if if, uh, if I'm not covering plenty of winners there because for some reason I'm mentioning four or six horses. Um, so if I don't snag the winner out of that four or six, I won't be collecting that race. Yeah. Um. But I would work from those notes right the way through the week, you know. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't expect there to be many changes unless there was a significant change in a farm line due to something that happened earlier in the week that led into something later in the week, you know. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I would expect everything to pretty much stand as, as when written, you know. Um, and that, that's what I would work from, you know, and I'd adjust the notes accordingly as prices changed, things like that, you know. Um, and as I said, just when, when, you, when I think I'm getting a bit of value, just try and get as much on as I can stand. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd, good points there. And, you know, I would say <laughs> I've got a sort of similar approach, but before I get on to my approach, I thought I'd just mention... Uh, a response from Ian Davis. Uh, very funny, this, actually. Um, he says, um, rather boringly, I think the Fez uh, is possibly the most analysed to death, hence efficiently priced event on the racing calendar. The best thing about the grade ones is everything he's trying, and worst thing about the grade ones is everything he's trying. <laughs> so, I mean, I kind of I kind of get, you know, where he's coming from in that, everyone's been looking at the races probably for four months because that's the kind of uh, scenario we're in now with the festival. Um, and but, but that aside, what I would say to Ian here is that uh, what I tend to do is, is make most of my notes throughout the season. So if I notice some, a bad trait about a particular Cheltenham fancy, especially, if it, you, know, you know, for a fact, all you've got to do is look on bloggers' account on Twitter. And look, look, look what look what the average Joes are trying to back. You know, look what they're, they're napping. And basically, you you need to find uh, ammunition against what what they're fancying just because it's bolted up by by ten lengths at, 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 at Leopardstown or Punchestown or whatever. Right, you need to pick holes in like the main contenders if you can, because that's where the value actually does lie on the day. Because let let's be fair. Uh, punters make markets as a rule and if if the general public is siding heavily with something then it's it's important to try and pick holes in that in that particular loss and I find my notes invaluable making notes throughout the season just on certain horses like this jumps slightly to the right or this you know um, this one gets gets jumps low at the odd obstacle that's no good at, at festival pace you know just things like that will give you an edge over the average juror in terms of, oh, well, this yeah. will win because it's won by 10, 10 wickets. Um, you know, and, and, and I think that's, that they're, they're my angles. I, I, I come into the festival armed with, me, obviously positives for horses I like, but at the same time, a lot of negatives around fancied runners. I try and get fancied runners beat because, because that's what, say, racing bloggers going to be backing or, you know, because they're, they're, they're non-profitable in essence. So, you know that's what, but you know you don't, don't oppose them willy nilly. But if you've got a good reasoning, then I think that's that's a good way of approaching the festival, um, and that's how I've always done it. Uh, as an in running player, I do look forward to the festival because I do think there is some certain value. And one of the tips I can offer people, uh, if if I mean some people will be familiar with the switch of the tracks um, between Tuesday and Friday. T- Tuesday and Wednesday are uh, the uh, old course, which is the sharper uh, of the uh, of, of the two tracks, and the new course is the more testing of the two tracks. The old course is a lot easier to make all. the uh, The new course is a lot harder to make all. It's a, it requires a different set of tactics, especially in testing ground. So that's something to bear bear in mind with your selections. Um, you know, front runners not really particularly advantageous for them on the final two days of of, of the meet. So, yeah, great question, that. Um, and like I say, a lot of people have different ways in uh, 
in getting their Cheltenham uh, selections together. Um, I kind of agree with Ian Davies, though, in a way. That he does make a fair point. That it is analysed to death, but we still have to make the best of it and get some value. And I, I can tell you now that me and John have definitely got some, some gems for you. So, like I said, don't miss that show on Sunday. Right, on to the racing. Um, it's uh, Saturday before the fairs, the Imperial Cups, the... Uh, the old the Imperial Cup County Hurdle double that, that, that you know that people used to like, uh, but we're going to start with Wolverhampton, and we've got three races up at the Sandpit um, in preparation for now a, a very tantalising flat season ahead of us, and we're going to start with the two hundred five race. That's the uh, Wolf uh, the Wolf Runa Stakes, a listed contest over seven furlongs. Current favourite at the prices at the moment uh, it depends which terms you use, but documenting his well-backed of Kevin Frost. John, have you any thoughts in the two or five at Wolverhampton? Yeah, rather boringly, I did think documenting was going to take the baiting, to be honest. Um, yeah. me, me worry was he's been off since November. Uh, Frost maybe wouldn't be the best at getting them cherry ripe first time up. That yeah. would probably be my only worry about that, man. Um, and I, I didn't think it was a particularly deep race, did you? Um, I think there's a few in here that, that to me have gone. Uh, for example, yeah. like Lord, Lord of the Lodge, I, I don't, I don't think is. I, I think there's a bit of going through the motions with that. To be honest, um, I'm not really a Lord of the Lodge fan. Um, no. That's putting forth in the market. Um, there's not, like you said, there's not a lot of depth to the race lower down. As soon as you get down to Reb. Uh, of say Bin Saros, then you, you go into horses rated vastly inferior to the likes of uh, documenting and, and Highland Dress. However, um, I did have something of interest that I felt might be worth noting for people. Um, Mum's tipple, Richard Hannans. Um, it felt to me, uh, watching it back last time, I think they've got the horse back after gelding it. The horse just completely went the wrong way after probably one of the most impressive performances I've ever seen at York when it won by 11 lengths in that uh, six furlong maiden. Do you remember that, John? Unbelievable, wasn't it? Yeah. The, time, yeah. the time backed it up. The time was stupid. There were, <coughs> there were rumoured to be two, three million pound bids in for the horse straight after the race, which was obviously turned down. They thought they'd got like a, a genuine Guineas prospect. And he just thought he ought... He just... He, he kind of... <laughs> it kind of went south of them on the, after that. Um, however, you're getting a penny uh, more than you're getting for winning the guineas yourself, don't you? <laughs> you have to think we do. But I mean, I, mean I, lo- I love the comments of the owner. He, a- he actually turned around and said um, that no, he, he bought it as a gift, only 130,000, I think it was. Bought it as a gift for his wife and his. Um, and, and, and their uh, friends or whatever, just to have an enjoyment of the races, and it's not for sale. I'm but, thinking, by the end of last season, he was pro- probably beating the living shit out of his wife. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, this, it's certainly a decision that, uh, I mean, if you're a business person, you've got to say person these days, um, you, I, I would, yes, you, you have to sell at, at decent offers. Um, certainly most people in this game haven't got the uh, the pound shilling and pence like the uh, the shakes and cool more have so you'd have to sell but anyway carrying on um, the horse ran at Lingfield on its reappearance being gelded um, it had absolutely plenty of running left and I mean plenty of run um, but there is sort of one um, bad thing um, Ryan got him in a, Ryan got it in a nice position Turning from home, you're thinking, this ain't too bad. If he can pull the horse out, you know, we, the horse really should be winning. Um, the, the minute Ryan tried to get him off the, off the fence and get him into daylight, the horse wanted to lug left and, and not, not go where Ryan wanted him to go. It looked as though Ryan had, had messed up, and I can bet on Twitter there were some angry people saying, you know. But you could see the horse wanted to go one way, and that was left. Uh, finally, on the, when he asked him for the second time, he did finally pull out, but the, the initial lug left cost him. And, but there were tons left at the line. And I would think, now he's settling better, seven would certainly be up his street. I think he's an interesting runner, but apart from him wanting to lug left when first asked, would put me off in terms of 
been very confident about it. But it's something that I, I think the horse might just go forward this year. Do you think if everyone wants to be a bit more positive on it, Alice? Because, I mean, when it was so impressive at York, I mean, it was in front early enough, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean that was it basically it, it was like blast off it was uh, yeah. it was it was NASA it was Elon Musk Kate Kennedy bang you know where we go um, but um, I think what happened was after that the horse just went went like a nutcase yeah and and it, and it just it, it, as if it wanted to do that every time and then it, and, and the interesting thing about my hanging left comment was it was hanging left uh, on you know sort of last year uh, yeah. on the turf so if that's a trait it's kind of a problem on the old weather because you end up on that dead rail um, yeah. but anyway I, I'm not really interested now it, it's been backed it's, it's coming in sort of seven to two-ish bumps simple. it was six um, so that kind of me off a bit. so I'm abstaining on that and John for the um, John you get some feedback on that mic yeah just one second just check that. Uh, all right. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, just heard some massive. I think it was a plane. But you, were, I thought you were landing a plane on the back. <laughs> <side. laughs> in the chopper out. <laughs> I think so. Um, anyway, uh, so we, we've covered that one. Um, uh, John has a documented Mum's tipple. Maybe a watching brief, but. You know, an interesting race to watch, maybe. Uh, 240 Wolverhampton. Uh, this is the uh, one mile and a half furlong Bombardier uh, Ale uh, Lincoln Trail handicap. Um, the academic. Yeah, well, I can give you a little bit of stats on this. Uh, Kuala Lipis won this race in 97. Uh, no, it didn't. It was fourth in this race in 97. Went on to win the Lincoln. John Fernley in 2000, ran third in this, went on to win the Lincoln. Nimello won this in 2001 and went on to win the Lincoln. But 65 runners have tried since then and none have won the Lincoln since. John, have you any thoughts on this? Well, as regards the potential Lincoln winner, no, because uh, there's nothing in here trained by William Haggis as a potential winner group one, is there? So um, you'd, you'd probably say no. Um, one that I am incredibly interested in, though, is the um, same yard as you've just been talking about, the old yogurt cannon, uh, <laughs> Man of the Night. Um, yeah. Spent last year applying his trade over 10 furlongs. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> was very free going, you know, all, all the three runs. Um I think back to a mile, the pace will suit him better, the game switched off. He's, he's still in the proper Lincoln. Um, yeah. And I, I, I do tend to think switched off over the straight mile that Donnie would suit this horse. Whether it suits him tomorrow, I don't know. Um, but as for the selection, he, he would be the one because I think he probably has the most potential. Um, uh, another one I, I did like the look of as well was on a session for David Barron first run for him I think it's on a decent mark they paid 70 grand for it um, and I think that'll be interesting to see what he can do with that this year but man of the night for me is the, the, the potential horse in, in this race interesting and I think we can have our first Bar steward star bet then of of of, uh, of Saturday because I'm in uh, total agreement with you. Um, I felt that that basically the camp campaign this horse at ten furlongs last year. Um, I thought that was a mistake given given how keen he is or, or, or can be keen, not always but but usually. Uh, the second to try tonic, second to Zabiel champion, he's certainly form that's good enough uh, to win a contest like this. Like you say, the dropping trip suits. Um, and I like the fact they've left him as an entire. I think yeah, when me too, so, yeah. When, when they do that, it's a case of, well, because it's easy to geld one and just say, well, well, we'll get rid of, try and get rid of the keenness, we'll geld it. 
Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll try and get to 110. But the fact they've left it as an entire, they must be thinking that this horse could be like sort of pattern class, um, you know, and they don't, they don't want to have the old kahunas off just yet. Um, so that is going to be the first bar stewards uh, nap of the weekend, I think, uh, man of the night uh, in the 240 there, the Lincoln trial. So me and John both agree in there that that horse has a certain amount of potential. He's a good pedigree for potential, isn't he, really? I mean, uh... I, yes, I do like Night of Thunders. I, I, yeah. I, I, do, I do like the sire. Um, I, I, think, I think they produce some real precocious, precocious type of talent. Horses that, that can... That, I mean, if you remember Night of Thunder himself, he had that ridiculous turn of foot. That just, yeah. He hung... He sort of he got there and he, and he and when he got there he kind of kind of hung, but he but he had that explosion uh, of of, of turn of foot and I, I do think some of that appears in some of the offspring. So, like Al, say, Al, Al Shikab has paid like two hundred and sixty thousand euros for the, uh, our, our sisters to this. Interesting. You know, Again, yeah. yeah, that is a good point. So, so it shows you that that. that Potentially, they, they, and leaving this as an entire, they obviously believe that this could be better than 97. Also, otherwise, you, you, you'd have its yeah. coconuts off, and, and away you go. Hmm, interesting. So, uh, so that's a bet we like. Uh, 3.15 Wolverhampton we had next. It's the third and final uh, ITV4 race. It's over six furlongs. Betway handicap is class 2, not to 105. A classy race for the venue, of course. John, any views here? Um, yeah, I, I like repartee. Um, I think the, the cheap price is going on first time um, and the fact that it won first time up last year. Um, Kev Ryan, I'm pretty sure he won't have much of a plan for this other than get it fit and win as quickly as we possibly can. Yeah. Um, and I think this is the ideal type of race for it. Um distance winner, lightly raced, bit of potential. Um I think there's some absolute mooks in this. Um <laughs> you know, um some again the lovely horse probably be the danger, but I think repartee off one oh one's still got a little bit of room for manoeuvre on that uh, handicap mark. Um, do you think uh, do you think me. do you think Geldin uh, first time for FRT, you'll help. The, the type of stock Kevin seems to favour getting in. Yeah. The old lookers are the one gelding at the end of the two year old careers, I think. Um, yeah. Because at half the time, you, you, you look at them and say, right, this wants to stop growing now. You know, else we're going to have a novice chaser on our hands when he's over six furlongs. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I can't see that being a bad thing either that the knackers are off. He, he does. He does like that big type, doesn't he? Oh, you know, I mean, they, they wouldn't just jump at fence and plough through one, wouldn't they? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, it, it is a great sight actually. If you, if you ever, especially in the north, if you, if ever you go racing in the north, you know, you, you watch a Kevin. One of Kevin, if Kevin Ryan's bringing out his a two year old, you, usually it's probably it's probably about half a hand bigger than anything else in the field. It's it's always got that sheepskin nose band on. It, it, it's quite a sight, really, because he they do he does produce them in in really good order. Um, and as I say, especially at York, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah I mean, he he loves it. He loves a two year old winner at York, and 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 I can remember having a tip tip for it first time. Uh, didn't back it. I was quite sick, but you know, he he, <laughs> he absolutely routed them. Um, but again, it, it probably would do because it's like you say, it's probably more forward in its, its development, but. Anyway, I mean, I can't fault the selection really. Um, the the one thing I did think with this race was the lack of pace, because I, I did I did come on the side of Summergant, a Stewards Cup winner. Um, it, it shaped well on reappearance. It shaped well last time. Um, it's it's stepping forward in fitness terms. It looks in good nick. There's nothing wrong with the horse at the moment. It's a flexible uh, the one, horse as well, isn't it? Looking at it either way. Yeah. Um, how they have been riding it is obviously for a, for a little bit of luck, and it won't get that look, I don't think, if they ride it the same way, because I cannot see any confirmed absolute out and out pace. 
in this, and probably Brian the Snail will go on. But yeah. I don't think I don't think he's good enough. I think he's just he is what he is. Um, and 102 certainly flatters Brian the Snail. I, d- I wouldn't be backing Brian the Snail to win many handicaps this season off 102. Um, so for that reason, again, I, I feel I feel a chicken, but I'm abstaining be- just purely because I do like some again, but I'd have to, I'd have to make sure that they weren't going to drop it in and sit fifth or sixth and let the race develop in front of them. Because, like I say, I, my fear is the lack of pace in that. Anyways, we shall move on. We've covered the three flat races there on ITV4. Uh, we move over to Sandown, which is the Imperial Cup meeting, a meeting I, I, I'm quite fond of because it's it's kind of reminds you that Shelton's coming next week. And, you know, I used to love Martin Pipe lining up a, a big front runner in, a, in an Imperial Cup, you know, and blasting off at 600 mile an hour with the blood swapping. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, sadly, we, we, well, we, we've we not got Martin Pike these days. Um, but anyway, we go to the 150 race to kick the card off. It's the uh, it's the final of the uh, National Novices Handicap Hurdle, a grade three event over two and a half miles. Carl Philippe heads the market at 11 to two. John, any thoughts? I had a lot of thoughts, not a single one of them coherent, sadly. Uh, I thought Martin Al, pressure, low caution, just sometimes as always would be right on it. So I, I thought there'd be stacks of pace on it. Um, yeah. And I thought the two that might benefit the most would be possibly Road to Sanam and maybe Riggs. Uh, yeah. see both of them being held up out of arms away. Um Road to Sanam is probably still more of a frog than a Brit, really, but he's adapting. And uh, with the yard in better nick than of late, I, I, I think that one can make his presence felt. Riggs, pretty consistent, but the consistency means he's getting no respect from the handicapper. Whereas Sam Barton's Doncaster farm is actually working out quite well. And after careful <laughs> rumination, I'm quite happy to side with that one. Um, loads of horses with potential in here, like it's, it's a massively competitive race, isn't it? Um, Good race. I, th- I thought Sam Barton would be my token selection. Yep. Um, Sam Barton trained by Emma Lavelle, written by Tom Bellamy, currently around 12 to 1, I believe. Mm. Um, Interesting that you mention Riggs. It's not it's not my bet. I do have a very strong bet in this race, but it's interesting that you mentioned Riggs because if anyone wants to watch the video back on the 24th of February, Riggs was second to Patroclus, the first choice uh, of Nico de Boinville uh, of the Henderson uh, runners in this race. Um, and Riggs should have beat this by five minutes. Uh, what Harry Skelton was doing in the straight at Doncaster... It, I mean, in beggar's belief, it was it was much much the best. If you just watch it back and tell me how Riggs should not have won that, uh, it should have won. Um, and yet Riggs's twenties and Patroclus, uh, I believe, is around the sort of nine ten to one mark. I wouldn't be backing Patroclus to beat Riggs. That that's where I'd start the race off. Um, however, I do have a very strong bet in this and. When Nico chose Patroclus, I literally jumped up and down with joy because I thought, get in there. You know, I've not got an idiot on board and I've got James Bowen on instead and Captain Morgs. Um, they've, they've been back in it, which is very sad because obviously it's all the, I think it's your golf travel people like that that earn it. The Albatross Club, it's, it's all the golfers that earn it. Probably Westwood involved somewhere along the line. I don't, I don't know. But they're back in it. Um, that makes me annoyed, uh, but, but I can't have everything. Now, the background with this horse, I can tell you, ran in its bumper. Nico rode it. He's rode it every start. He, Nico rode it for a turn of foot. An idiot, right? He rode it for a turn of foot at Warwick, a sharp track. It got beat. It was second. Then at Ascot, uh, Nico, it was a little bit of a better pace. It was over two miles, which is inadequate. Uh, the horse got up in the closing stages, did it okay. Next time they go to Kempton, again, three runners, uh, Nico lets uh, Ajero literally walk walk round, 
walk round at his own pace, do what you want, which again does not suit the horse. Ajero has since won off 129 in a handicap hurdle. Well, Captain Morgs would beat Ajero in any strongly run race going, I can tell you that with, with assurance. Next time out, Nico thinks, right, well, I know what I have to do now. Uh, I have to make the running because, um, you know, uh, the horse isn't getting the paces to run at it once, so Nico makes the running. But as we know, making your own pace is never ideal because you're not going the pace that brings you into a... This is tailor-made, this horse, for a strongly run uh, handicap hurdle, which he's going to get. Um, it's it's two and a half miles. He's very well in up 128. It's a lot better than 128, given these circumstances. I do accept there's some that it's a competitive heat, and just because you've got maybe ten pound in hand, that might not be enough. You know, you, Carl Philippe, for example, being ridden quietly by Paddy at, at places like Exeter, and I don't think we've seen the best of that. That's why it's favourite. And um, there's a, there's a few in here that you can like. Patroclus would not be one of them. Uh, it's the, uh, Patroclus, I couldn't have with... That's Nico's choice. I'm pleased he's chosen. Are, are you expecting the Carl any time soon to write Nico's autobiography? Yeah, for sure. Because um, uh, unlike the Dick Francis version of Piggott's autobiography, where Piggott never wrote a bad race, <laughs> I think uh, the, the, the Lee Keys Nico version will be uh, pretty much warts and all, won't it? Well, I think I think rather than I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, you're right, but I I think the lad's lost it a bit. You know, he's not riding nowhere near. He's the level. This is lousy. He'll have no confidence to marry <laughs> when he eats breakfast. <laughs> Poor Nico. And uh, I mean, we have to make these crucial decisions when 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 money's on the line. We have to pay. We have to pay the gas bill. So we have to make these calls. It, it, it's uh, all three on the basket, which we don't go smoke. I know. <laughs> yeah I mean so I mean anyway so Captain Morgs basically has been ridden very very poorly um, on <laughs> four, four, four starts so far he's been placed badly as well by, <laughs> by, by Popeye um, but maybe that's a good thing because they've got him off 128 for a, for a 28 grand final for the Albatross Club and your golf travel let's cheer them home um, we're on Captain Morgs that's one of my big naps this weekend so uh, I thought I'd spend a bit of time on that one with it being, a, being st- such a strong bet. Right, we move on. Uh, so it's Captain Morgs for me, and John's selection uh, was Sam Barton. That was available around 12 to 1, I believe, uh, in that uh, race at Sandown. We now move on to the big race of the day, the, in, the Paddy Power Imperial Cup, uh, over two miles, of course. Uh, John, thoughts in this? Well, um... Natural history probably still falls in the could be anything categories. And I know it was only Plumpton, but I don't think sixteen pound probably did justice to the exhibition they put in there. I think it's probably one for our fair Um I also like Langa Dan. Uh he's been the subject of plenty of interest in the market this week. Looks laid out for it. Very, yeah. very well in on the run in the builders last year. So I'd, I'd probably back Langer down in my research on natural history. Well, I, I, it's interesting you mentioned Langer Dan because anybody watched that Raisin race and tell me that was a trier at Market Raisin. Mm. And I, I, will, I will bring my rod of, of doom and tell you your line because, I mean, that was just an incredible ride. And again, we talk about untouchables in terms of connections. If that would have been somebody else other than the skeletons, you know, they would have had him in. I, I've never seen a horse just not, he, he had a scoot round at the back and then just brought, brought, you know, with a, with a sort of a moderate hands and heels ride up the hill. It was, a, it was absolutely disgraceful. Um, so, I mean, obviously, this has been the target. Wind it was hardly hands and tails, was it? Just tails. It was disgraceful. <laughs> Seriously, how they don't have these people, I have no idea. Um, as blatant as you'll see, Langadan uh, at Market Race. Um, I agree. I t- I to- I'm totally in your ballpark with uh, natural history. Uh, I mean, I was. I even put on Twitter, how, you know, how, how the hell have they put this off 116? I, I, the handicapper must have been drunk. To give that yeah. 
Um, and it wasn't, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's just mental. Um, but like you say, it could be absolutely anything. I was looking for the times today to see, because this is typical Sandown. Good to soft ground, they've given it out. Two of the hurdles races I looked at today were 29 seconds slow and 27 seconds slow. Now, yeah, it's not good to soft, is it? I mean, the chase course, the thing is, the chase course was really fast. I mean, yeah. the, 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 I think that was six seconds slow, one of the chase races I saw. So I'm here thinking, well, you know, I'm a bit confused because natural history, in all honesty, I, I would just prefer, I, I, I don't want testing ground for it because it, it can be a bit hard on itself. It can be a bit thin. It, you know, it can, can take a good grip. And the, head, the, the more gluey, gluey or testing the ground is, I think goes against natural history because obviously Sandown, if it is going to ride 30 seconds slow, you know, that's one way you get natural history beat. You know, this is a quality flat horse. Um, and, and this is one way you would get it beat if, if the ground for me was, 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 was very tested um, or, or very, you know, very gluey. Um, so I'm a bit, again, for a selection, I, 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 sorry about this. I'm going to have to abstain. Langer Dan, I think, is a solid each way selection. The reason being because you know it's going to be about a stone better than last time. Um, clearly, you know, market raising. But then there's the untapped potential with with natural history. The betting's right. I, I, I don't really see any any mileage for a selection for me, so I'm going to abstain. So there you have it. <laughs> so John, were you were you in the Langadan camp for sure? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and serve on the other. Yeah. Again, again, so we, we sort we sort of in agreement there. So fair play. Uh, if you're playing on that race, front two in the market, we think me and John, we think that's it's between one or the other. Um, we move on to a, a very strange race to have on ITV for. It's the uh, it's the mayor's big mayor's national hunt uh, flat race uh, listed event three o'clock rainy day woman heads the market at three to one. John, did you get any chance to watch these on video or anything? Well, you know, man, yeah, it was overall on mayor's races. It's generally <laughs> you know uh, head for the fridge, get the patty out, and let the dog in for five minutes. Um, Cup of tea and some paint. Yeah, um, I thought possibly flirtatious girl. Run a couple of solids latest. Certainly bred to go a bit further. I had to say anything making massive strides here. I thought tends to be one exposed sorts. Step to the top, still a maiden farming titles, mix it with the better ones in here. Nice price, but yeah. no, no firms yet, wasn't it, to be honest. Well, I mean, I. <sighs> I mean, but I, my, my system members know that I'm not a fan of I'm not a fan of bumper races because because obviously you deal in general you're dealing with horses well normal bumper races you're dealing with horses that have been stood in a field for three years and then and then basically put into trading and asked to run fast across the field and you know a lot of the late maturing types some are some are backward and it's just hard work but. Uh, I did watch these because obviously we're doing we're doing a show uh, for you, and I, I did watch them all. And the the one I thought was a big price, and I can't believe I can't understand the odds either. Uh, Twelve to one about code name lease. The uh, reason being, um, it was second. She was second on debut to uh, a horse called Gold Bullion of Paul Nichols, who I know they've got in big regard, and he's entered in the Champion Bumper um, next week at the Fez and. She quitted us. She acquitted herself really well behind that. You know, chased it home. Obviously, no chance of beating it. Um, but then followed it up for me with a with a better performance because the race at Ascot she ran in last time um, wasn't well run, and I thought she did. She showed a real nice, smart little bit of turn of foot to just get there and do it nice and cosily. Beat a horse of Huey Morrison's that actually finished behind uh, one in here, Ballybo Mary, um, the Twisters runner. Um, so I just thought code name least the fact that she showed that foot and of course it's it's Bryony 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 for ITV you know they love that one um, so code name least I felt of Lucy Wadhams was 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 a bit of value at twelves I certainly think she can uh, and I love Fame and Glory's Fame and Glory's records uh, progeny in bumpers are are, are pretty impressive so far um, in fact I was chatting to. Um, 
uh, Christian Strangeway uh, coup uh, the other day, and I was asking him about sires he uses for his for his mares, and I, I suggested Fame and Glory as, as as a flat sire because this horse is having winners galore in bumpers. With na- so Nash Lump mares are producing fast fast. I, th- bumpers. I think he's such a shame he's not used as a flat sire. Well, th- this is the thing. A lot of people they think, oh well, it's a jump sire. It's mm. been pigeonholed as a jump sire because. The likes of Colmore have got have 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 got better have got better for, for the flat, but I think this is excellent. I mean, basically, if anyone's got got a flatbred mare, my, I would say ideal a mile and a quarter flatbred mare that, that's, that's useful. You know, send that to fame and glory. I think I think you're going to have a nice flat horse on your hands. You know, I mean, all their so-called jump sayers, they've all got paper that suggests they can throw a champion on the flat. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, pre- you mm. go back pre- presenting. You go, uh, uh, you, you, you can go back all the through the Sadler's Wells line. Is it Black Sam Bellamy or something that's a full brother of Galileo? Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, I mean, where, where I spend the money on Galileo? You got exactly the same day and air. I mean, let's be fair. If if you if you send, <coughs> uh, you know, three mile jumps mares by by Roselli and, yeah. and uh, et cetera, et cetera, to to, to these sires, you're going to breed. Slow, slow horses. I mean, that, 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 that's a fact. But Firm and Glory, I think. I mean, if I had a mare that was, you know, mile, mile and a quarter, I would love to send that that to that mare to, to Firm and Glory. So anyway, code name least for me um, in that. Uh, but me and John both might be making a cup of tea during that, um, or something stronger for me anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, so now we move on to the 335 at Sandown. Um, it's the final race of the TV previews. It's the Paddy's Rewards Club Novices Handicap Chase uh, of two and a half miles. Current favourite is Belargus of Nick Gifford. John, any thoughts here? Well, at risk of becoming a damn Skellington fan, uh, I thought <laughs> no, no getaway looked as though the, the wind up had done the world of good last time. Yeah, and I thought that one would probably go in again. I thought the danger was um, Belagus, trained by the maestro himself, Nick Gifford. Yeah, who uh, showing some ridiculous figure at the moment on the racing post train. I thought eighty three for God's sake, which eighty three percent. Yeah, mm-hmm. incredible for it. I mean, uh, I, I wouldn't be a fan under normal circumstances but uh, he, he seems to have his team in less shit form than usual shall we say <laughs> so yeah. um, I, I, I would make it between those two and I would possibly favour the skelly horse just because Nick Giffords had his biannual winner with this one last time I do like I do like the kid on, on board uh, <laughs> Nick Giffords John uh, yeah now Niall Hooligan claiming the five. It's five for nothing. Mm. Um, I think he's improving in leaps and bounds, and he's certainly he's certainly a jockey to follow. Uh, and I can't knock your selection, but I'm going to give my second strongest bet mm-hmm. of the uh, of the weekend here. Um, Admiral Baratry, uh, again of Lucy Wadham's fan of Lucy's. Come on, Team Lucy and Brian. You know, let's get on board. Oh. I'd say it'll be all over this, won't it? Let's get on board the ITV Love Fest. The Bar Stewards double. Come on, please. Send Alice down to interview him after the race. <laughs> An Admiral Baratry with Bryony with Bryony punch in the air. You know, oh. what, you know, it, it'll make the ten o'clock now. Um yeah, well. anyway. <laughs> right, Admiral Barratry, the, the the reason being, um, this horse uh won <coughs> on its penultimate start and did it very easily I thought Bryony had kept a lot up her sleeve when, when it did win 121 um, next time out uh, literally uh, three weeks later same track fake and uh, came out and made a horse called Fire Away pull out all the stops now Fire Away absolutely pissed up at Catterick um, this week jumping moderately but still pissed all over yeah, I've seen that yeah you can you can see that this or I mean, 
and Barris tried, made fire away, literally pull out all the stops. The, it was nip and tuck coming to the last. You couldn't tell. If fire away had missed the last out, Barris tried would have beat it. Um, four pounds for that is not enough. Um, like I said, Brownie Frost clearly gets on well with his horse. Going right-handed isn't, isn't a problem. Um, the if ground. If he got in as well with the rest of the way in row, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and basically everything's right. It's a brilliant jumper of a fence, which suits that the, the three railway fences down here. You get them right, you can win races. And I did feel Admiral Barratry was an absolute each way steal. Um, I cannot see this uh, uh, out, out of the frame. Um, I mean, we've got 10 runners, which is not bad for an each way race in terms of 50 odds. You know, it's money, money back for an unlucky effort. Um, as I said, I respect Balagas. I, I, I also respect your reasons for no getaway. It's not a gimme, but but as I said, Barris tries form with that fire away, which was the big treble, dirty gamble horse. Um, yeah. Um, I think that's the strongest form in the race. So Admiral Barris try would be my second best bet of the cards. John, what would you say would be your best bet of of of, of tomorrow? Um. Believe it or not, it's not on the telly. Um, <coughs> it's over at the bags, mate, in Hereford in the 402. And it's oh. Maracuja. Ah. Um, now, <laughs> this is what I mean, you know. Um, <laughs> we're, we're having a skill festival or something, aren't we? Uh, yeah. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a precursor to the big meeting. Um, He's got two in. Well, well, this one, you see, it's in at Cheltenham and it needs to win this to get in. Ah. It's the second run off a window and it run at the fairs last year off 154. It's down in the 130s now. Yeah. Clearly well handicapped. Um, and I, I've just had to go with that. Not a bad run last time either, is it, really? No, no. I thought it was all right. I mean, Umbrigado beat Killer Clown in that uh, that that big race. Well, Grade Three, yeah, yeah. And the, uh, the big one at Newbury last week, off 144 as well. Exactly. Yeah. Mm, interesting. And now it's turning up at Hereford. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh... yeah. I like that. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah, second off the wind up as well. Yeah. 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 I can go with that. I mean, so right. I mean, our selections then. Uh, to clarify, we've we've done some done some digging for you uh, on on this Saturday before Cheltenham. I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a bar stewards Yankee together, um, and we're gonna go the the first one we're gonna go for um, over at Wolves is in the uh, the the Lincoln trial the two forty. Uh, we me and John are both very keen on Man of the Night um, in that. Um, we're going to put John's selection in in the 402. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's Maracuja. So that's the second one in our in our big Saturday Yankee. So we've got Maracuja and we've got the Hannah Horse at Wolves. And I'm going to put my two naps in because I'm selfish. Um, so the 150 race is definitely my bet of the weekend, which would be Captain Morgs. And and then my other bet is going to go in there, which is Admiral Baratry. So that's our four horses. Put them in a Yankee. Enjoy the Saturday sport, I think, is the, is the advice from me and John. And, what, and watch the tank mount up, ready for the... Absolutely, yeah. For the punting orgy next four, week. Four from four there, and it's... Um, yeah, it's contraband. It's, it's all for now next week. It's, it's, it's contraband and, and, and whatever else, and, and the fez, and yeah, and, and you're loaded. It doesn't matter then. Anyway, so that's our advice. Uh, I, I, I'm going to end the show by saying don't forget to listen uh, on Sunday because that's when me and John unleash uh, our Cheltenham swords. Uh, and I can promise you we've got some ammo, some serious ammo for the fez. Um, and it's something all these preview shows that's gone out too soon well look at them now there's non-runners galore they're, they're all over the place where's the time listening to them you only want to listen to one show it's the bar stewards and it'll be on Sunday evening at around 7 7.30 don't miss it that's all from me and John so bye for now